Hello and welcome to Craft Academy. This is where we take you to another level with education, hints and tips with some of your favorite crafting techniques. This um, particular show is dedicated to jewelry making. I have the lovely Kleshner here with me right now. Hello, Hello. Kleshner. Hello and there, John. Welcome, Kleshner. We've got Thank some you. fabulous tips this evening from Kleshner. She's gonna take you through, in particular, the angle weave. Let's have a little look, in fact, at what this show is going to be featuring. Getting started with joy making, of course, what do you need? What's it all about? All the beautiful beads. Introduction to stitches for your jewelry making. The right angle weave, a very important technique that's going to give you lots of different possibilities. And the daisy chain stitch. Now then, let's get started straight away, Kleshner, because of course you yourself, you've been in this industry a very long time. Uh -huh. You make jewellery professionally for a living yep. as well and, and create loads of fabulous kits for people to have a go with at home. Indeed I do. And, you know, I, I count myself as one of the very lucky people um, because I love doing what I do for a living. I, you know, I just think I'm very fortunate uh, that I can do this. And... And own a crust whilst I'm doing it. Absolutely. Yeah. But I would love to tell all our viewers a little bit about the history of um, using beads because I think what most crafters will do is what we call composite jewellery making mm -hmm. rather than, although I, I know some people do go and do silversmithing, but the kind of things that we get up to here are composite jewellery making okay. where we're composing a number of things using very specialist stitches from various different types of beads. And did you know that the first beading goes back to something like, and I'm just looking at my notes here, 3100 BC. Can you believe that? I know, isn't that extraordinary? Yeah. And it, of course, it's, it's in the wonderful ancient Egypt. Gosh, well, they, well, well, you see, I can I, I, I mean, fully understand. Well, uh, very very appreciate and understand. Very they're very talented people. people, they are. In fact, the, the education, you know, the history, the education yep. in Egypt is immense. And I actually went to see the Tutankhamun exhibition and they have all the beaded collars and it's out of this world. You can't believe that they were doing that all that time ago. So uh, I'm very grateful for yeah, you No, that, not yeah. at all. And, and I think most cultures have, have used beads for personal adornment. And that goes back some 5,000 years. Mm years now but you know what I would like to introduce our viewers to uh, for the kickoff is quite what a plethora of tools you know whilst you can start with something as simple as a needle and thread yeah it has to be the right needle mm -hmm. and the right thread okay. when you're beading and I've just got a, a kind of a mixture of things out laid out here in mm -hmm. front of me that I've grabbed from my studio before I came up here. Now, there are different types of beading needles and I've got a number of them here. I like to use very long ones mm -hmm. um, because they are flexible and you need a beading needle to be fine, but flexible. And I have to say, you do need lots of beading needles because, because they are flexible, um, they do have a tendency to break and if you're working with very fine beads, then you will need a finer needle. So they are like a size 12, um, a size, I think, 13 and a size 10. Mm -hmm. You can get in beading needles. You can get them all different lengths. You can get little short ones. I think I've got a short one here. There we go. So there's a very That's short, tiny. tiny beading needle. And if I am doing very small bead work or something that doesn't require a length to go through, uh -huh. I will use a small beading needle. Okay, but a perfect. lot of the time I will use a long one. You know, and one of the things that I've actually bought to um, create and craft is this rather wondrous pebble here, which has got a number of different size needles in. And if you're starting off as a beginner, it's really useful um, to have different sizes to play with. And actually, what I love about this thing is I just hoik the middle out and keep yeah, it a, and as a needle like case. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then there are lots of different types of thread. I mean, the, the thread that's used for a lot of beading originated um, in the fishing industry. Really? Yeah. And we have different gauges of thread as well. I like using something called wildfire, but there's another thread which is called fireline. Uh, you know, I've got it. They make um, this in black 
and in white. And what's so special about a particular thread or the thread you would need that you couldn't use a, a normal sewing thread? Well, the flexibility and indeed also the durability the of it. The strength of it. The strength okay. of it. You know, if I try to, I, I hope it doesn't prove me wrong, but I, <laughs> there is no way I yeah, could break tough. that piece of thread. Tough, it's tough. very tough and very durable. What I like about the wildfire and the fire line is that, um, it's quite light as, as well as being durable. Okay. And as I'm an artist, a bead artist that works mostly in crystal, mm -hmm. it, I have to use something durable. However, um, I've more recently found this extraordinary stuff, which is called power cord. Right. And power cord is unbelievable. It, it looks like cotton. Right. It feels like cotton, but my goodness gracious me, it is incredibly durable and in fact, I have had to purchase the most horribly expensive pair of scissors. You can cut it with normal scissors. But because it's so much stronger. But because it's so strong, you know, this, this is a normal pair of really good quality sewing scissors, right? Oh, you can see, yeah. And I'm having a problem cutting it. This is, these are scissors to cut it with. Okay. And these scissors, you, I don't know if we can pick it up on the camera or not, but these have got a tiny serrated. little serrated, yeah, the serrated edge. edge yeah. And they cost me a fortune, but I love them mm, because the they job. cut beautifully. They're like, okay. it's an investment tool. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Of course. And then, I mean, there are other, many other things, you know, this, this here is what we call a crystal katana. And if you're setting things, I mean, this would be great for a carder. This picks up flat backs. Okay, I see, yeah. Um, this is a zapper. Um, this is great for um, cutting off the ends of thread, okay. melting things, mm -hmm. creating a good little blob of something so something doesn't come off the end. Um, we have other various threads. I sometimes use a pair of snipe nose pliers, which are the pointy ones. I'll just put that like that so we can see it on the camera. Uh, the pointy pliers are great for that sort of thing. I you know, sometimes if you're going through a number of times, mm -hmm. you'll need to pull it through. And you've got a selection of different pliers. But as you go along, you're going to invest and you're going to build your tool Absolutely. range anyway, aren't you? To get started, though, for somebody who just really wants to get started, maybe they're watching for the first time yep. and thinking, OK, I want to have a go at jewellery making. What, what are the essentials? The essentials, if you're doing a beaded piece of jewellery rather yep. than, than a manipulated piece of jewellery, is a needle and thread okay. and some great scissors and you know you that's as simple as you can get started okay. with now you obviously have a lovely beading mat here that you can actually pop into so it is worthwhile investing in some it of is. the basic tools the beading mat keeps everything nice i've been doing it on trays and they've been yep. rolling all over the place Absolutely. it's not been ideal no and um, so like a velvet or a plush mat like this is perfect it's really fantastic and I, I just very swiftly, I'd love to just show people. This is a tiny, 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 um, this much tiny. Of beads of, that are of available. Some of the beads that yeah. are available. And, you know, this is a company called Preciosa. Um, thank you very much. And this is what I mean about sizes. Look, the beads here we've got from Preciosa come from a size 11, 12, 13, right the way up to a size four, which is the largest. So the smaller the number, the larger the bead. And you can see here, I've annotated it. I've put four millimeters, mm -hmm. five millimeters, because there's a lot of geometry, a lot of math ma mathematics involved in putting patterns together. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I will let you, the other secret I'll let you into, gosh, this, this one goes on for, for miles, this one, all right? And there's a little insert is, uh, all the I, different types all of beads, All the different beads, types obviously. of beads, the different dyes of beads, the different colours. The more luscious the colour, the more expensive the bead. So the more metallic it has in it, mm -hmm. generally speaking, the more expensive the bead, or if it's lined. And beads are made like, like a stick of rock. They, they spin a long, 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 long tube, and then they chop it. Now that's... Mm. That's seed beads, okay. Okay, perfect. And we use a lot of seed beads, and they now come in fantastic Amazing. different color choices, isn't that? Oh well, that's that's only a, a, that's one company. That's one company. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I mean, the best companies come from either Czech Republic or um, Japan. 
And then, of course, I have a company that everybody oh, you knows I love, of. Yeah, the this Swarovski. is Swarovski Crystal. They're and amazing. I, I work an awful lot with Swarovski Crystal. And this gives you just an idea of all of the colorways that there are. And then down the side here, they put in plain crystal some, just a tiny, tiny selection of the shapes they have. And again, the same as with the seed beads, with the Swarovski crystals, the, the plain colored crystals, which- These Swarovski are here. Um, they are, yes. You so see how beautiful they are. The plain colored crystals here, like these without any coating on, are the cheaper of the crystals. Mm -hmm. The more coating, and then they go into having half coated crystals, and then they go into full coated crystals, and then the most extraordinary colors are double coated crystals. Wow. So, I mean, it, uh, you know, I could take up hours and hours on, on their own. Just on the beads. And if we look at some of the jewellery pieces around us here, there are some exquisite designs and beads that Kleshner does actually bring to us. Now, we really do need to get into this. That's oh, why yeah, I know. So much to I know. Show. There's so much to show you. Right. What I'm going to show you, first of all, is a stitch called right angle weave. Now, right angle weave is used in, and I'm going to show you like a very simple beginner's right angle weave. In okay. fact, the, the bracelet that I am wearing and the bracelet you're wearing mm -hmm. has been made using right angle weave. And you can see, whoops, quite how effective right angle weave is. In that piece over there, I've used a very simplistic version of right angle weave. But look how effective it is when you put an, an insert into a sterling silver chain. In fact, that piece came out of our normal Pret-a-Porter um, range because I love the stitch so much. Mm. And you know, when you're creating a range of things, you have to actually make sure that the cost and what you can sell it for yes, are commensurate yeah. with what people will buy for it. Yeah. Now, a right angle weave is quite simply a way of creating sheets of beautiful fabric. So this again here is right angle weave that we're looking at just here at the top. Yeah. And now this is very on trend, very fashionable to wear these sort of cuffs of bracelets. Absolutely. And you literally start with just simply four beads. So I'm picking up four of these crystals. You can also do it with, there we go, seed beads. Mm -hmm. I can lever the lid off this without actually dropping the whole darn lot. No, no I've done that the wrong way around. Never mind. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> that is one of those evil, evil things. There we go. Right. So this is the seed beads that you can yeah. do it with as well. They're beautiful. They are rather beautiful, aren't they? Now, there we go. I'm going to put that down there and hope that they don't fall everywhere. And of course, that is one of, one of the dangers of working with seed beads, any beads, is that they have a wonderful habit don't worry, of, of rolling around everywhere. Right, I have picked up four crystals on here. I'm going to hold them in my fingers and I'm going to pull them all the way down until I have about a one, two, three inch of thread here. And then I'm going to use my index finger to go around and I'm going to pick up all these four beads again until I make it into a diamond. Now, let you into some of the secrets and tricks of the trade. There we go. So there's my diamond. What I will always do when I am doing right angle weave for a piece is I will always go around each stitch twice. Okay. Because one of the, the dangers of, of not doing so is that it, it starts to gape. And you will find that if you try and do right angle weave and kind of cheat a bit. And there we go. Can you see, I've got a little tail here and I'm going to keep that tail there um, because it's a great thing to hang on to. Okay. You know, if you consider that sometimes you're working, I'm working with four millimetre beads here. You're working with tiny little... Three Are you what they look like? They're square beads, these ones. Are they, they square? They're called a bicone. Okay. And so they're like two pyramids popped together, okay. basically. And then I'm going to pick up only three beads in the next... Um, round mm. and I pop it into the top. I go through the same hole here. Now, can you see how? And then I flip it over normally. But the great thing about leaving this tail, you can see I hold it in my hand. And again, I will go up through the side bead again. And you're working at right angles all the time. 
and across the top bead. Now, if we didn't have any time constraints, but you can see very gently here. Can you see here? I, I don't know if we can get in. I'm going to pop that down here. We kind of need to go overhead. But there's a little bit of a gap here. Yeah, OK. And that's why it's really beneficial to go around it twice, because it does tend to gap because of the right angles that we're going at. But I'm just going to carry on here. And then again, you pick up three beads again. Now, if you want to create different colours and different patterns, as I have done in some of the cases here, let me just show you a little illustration of one I've done here using silver, sterling silver balls in it. So it's very simple. You can use a special graph paper. Mm -hmm. And in the same way as you would plot a pattern, for knitting yeah, or for, for doing a tapestry, so you plot a pattern for doing right angle weave. Okay. So say I wanted to have that cross. Mm -hmm. On my um, on the second bead that I come up on t uh, through to, I would actually put a silver bead in. Right. So I would pick up a silver one next at the moment, I'm just going to create a little sheet of this just to show you how fluid this is as a material. And then, of course, once you've got one row of right angle bead, right angle, right, right angle weave. In fact, the other name for right angle weave you'll often find in books is raw. It's really? often referred to by its initials, a right angle weave. And then you can do something called cubic right angle weave which is referred to as craw. <laughs> right, OK. <laughs> Sounds really strange, doesn't it? There we go. Right, I've done just a few little passes of right angle weave here. Mm -hmm. But what I'd like to show everyone is how you then go around the corner. So when you want to go around the corner on this, you go down to your side bead here what do you mean round the corner? Well, I want to, for instance, go and do my next row. So I've done my first row. Yes. In fact, maybe I can show you on this white one because it's a long one. I've done my first row here. Yeah. And in order to do the next row. Ah, OK. So here, for example, you've gone down and done the black and then you come in back and doing the gold. Is that correct. what you mean? I, no, I've done two rows there. Right. And then I've done two rows of gold, two oh, rows of silver, okay. right? So I've done... I'm only doing a tiny, so you can either work it that way as a mm -hmm. band, in which case if I was doing this, I'd have to, rather like fair isle knitting, I'd have to do um, one of silver, one and a half of silver, mm -hmm. add in one of the gold, and add in again one of the black. So it's much easier to work, if you're making a bracelet, you're much working better rows. off working a long okay. row, rather than doing like a fair isle stitch. But for the purpose of, of doing this, I think it's much easier if I just show everybody this. So, right, we've got a top bead, a side bead, a bottom bead, and a side bead. Okay. In order to turn around a corner, what you will do is you will come out of the, the top of the bead at the end of the row. Right. Hold on, let me hold that up. Yeah. You'll then pick up three beads, Okay. And you will then go around the top. This is how you go around the corner. Okay. Can you see like that? Yeah, so you've started some movement around. So I've started there. to go around the, that one. Then what you have to do, this is where it gets slightly more complicated. And, you know, if, if you are a beginner doing this, it seems like a nightmare when you're, you're just suddenly having to change direction. So we're changing direction here. Now one of the things that you don't want to do is you don't want to, in the gaps, get nasty crisscrosses. So you then do what's called like a figure of eight almost. So I've gone around the corner now, so I've created my first blob here. I don't think we can see that frightfully well. Do you want to hold it up right I'll hold before? it up. Yeah, just hold it there. 
Okay. Right. Perfect. So in order to go into and do the next one, what we do is we go through the side bead here We pick up only two beads in mm -hmm. the next pass and we go through here, through the bottom bead of the first one, through the side bead of the first row. So we've gone around that way and now we're going to go across the bottom bead like that and we're now going to go around this way so we've gone all we've gone around that way and now we're going to go around this way so that's why we call it a figure of eight okay so that um stops you getting unse unseemly looking crosses otherwise you'd have a sort of a material that had sort of crisscrosses in all the wrong places so we're going around the opposite way. So you go clockwise and anti-clockwise, basically. But so if you, you, you're basically running one row and then coming back and doing another correct. row at the side of it to Absolutely. build the width Absolutely, to build of the width or the breadth of the actual piece of your bracelet. I mean, I've only done, I, this would be a bracelet for a, a very, very tiny mouse or something because <laughs> I haven't done a long row because otherwise it will take too long. So now I'm going to go around this way. I'm going to go clockwise. Okay. So I put my needle through the side bead of the previous row. Mm -hmm. I pick up two, only two beads when you're building it up. And I'm going through the bottom bead from the first row to create my right angle. Through here. And now I'm going to go anti-clockwise. So I go through the bottom bead from the row I've just done. Okay. I pick up two more beads and I, I'm now going anti-clockwise. So I'm going through the side bead of the previous row. And it's, do you know, it's a rhythm. And once you get into and that rhythm. And once you get into that there. rhythm, you will find it really easy. When I first learnt how to do this stitch, I thought it was a complete nightmare and very, very difficult. Right, now I've got this little piece of right angle weave here. I'm just gonna pop that in my hand. Okay. Now, if I want to change direction, mm -hmm. as with the necklace, which we've got on the display at the front. Okay, the this front one, one there, which goes at a, up at an at angle. A, at a right angle, yes, ironically. Yeah. Yeah. Then what I'm going to have to do is to do, so I've gone that way with the stitch, is to do the stitch at coming an in a, at an angle. Yeah. So I'm going to do a stitch. I'm going to do right angle, right angle weave. Right. <laughs> What I'm going to do is I'm going to change colour thread here. So I've gone back through that bead. Let's use, let's use a white bead, then you'll see very easily. I'm going to spill a few out. Also, I find that keeping all my beads in see-through pots is incredibly handy because the benefit is you can see the colours. Have a quick slurp of water there. And you can actually blend the colours and see what colours go with which different other mm -hmm. colours. Yeah. And it, it's very, very helpful. Right, again, I am only going to need... Um, hold on, let me just go back through this because I have to study this before I do it. Wait a minute. OK. So I, you, go, you go across there. Right, so and now, I'm, now I'm ready to change direction. I'm just going to pop that on my hand. And I'm going to pick up three beads here. Okay. And I'm going to go in a clockwise direction. They're beautiful AB beads, aren't they? Oh, uh, the AB beads. The, these, are, these are actually white opal. Really? They look like AB, but they're white opal. They're gorgeous. So can you see here, I'm now starting 
to go in the opposite direction. So let, let's make this into a chunky little turn. Hold on. So I've put three beads on in the same way as if I was going to be going back through the row. I'm now going across here and I'm now going to pick up two beads. There we go. Now this could actually be the strap of a bracelet or it could be the detail on the front of a necklace. Absolutely. It? That's what Clashton is doing now is creating the detail like we've shown you on the front of the necklace there. So a nice little feature there. But the starting procedure obviously would create any of the bracelets like the one that I was wearing. And now, because I'm going to build it out this way, yeah. and I've got two rows here, I'm now going to do it. Um, I, I've therefore created the need to make almost like um, a turning row. But you would normally have changed this to a white thread, would you? I would have normally, if I yes, if I'm changing to a different colour that isn't sympathetic um, with the thread, then I would, I would change it to a white thread. Absolutely, you're right. And actually talking about threads, one of the um, anomalies about doing right angle weave or any of these beading things is that you will often see people um, in books or on YouTube or on you know, different sites recommending that you use extremely long pieces of thread. Mm -hmm. And I personally don't advocate that because I think that you get tangled up in them. And then it becomes very frustrating because, there we go, I'm just picking up now. Because so most I, of the time you're picking up three beads, aren't Well, you? I'm picking up three because I'm not doing a backwards and forwards row now. I'm weaving out to the left. So okay. the first one of each one, because I'm doing a two row weave here, is going to be like I'm turning a corner each yes. time. So when you turn a corner, you pick up three. When you do a continuation, you only pick up two. Right. So I'm picking up three for the beginning of this row. And then on the next one along, I'm only gonna pick up two. So effectively you've got three at the same time going on the thread, but then Correct. you're going back in and stitching through those three to secure them in place. Correct. And then I'm only picking up two. And actually... Which fits in the middle of the three. Which fits in the middle of the three. I Correct. get it now. Right, okay. It, it, it's, it's terribly easy once it's in your hand and you're doing it. It seems terribly difficult when you're just watching. It's rather like anything, actually. Um, if someone demonstrates how you learn to do something, I can never learn it. It's rather, you once know... You some, start to do it yourself. Some, but, and I, I yeah. often, when someone shows me something, I say, I've got to do it myself. So I've made a, I've made a little V here. Mm -hmm. See what you mean? Yeah. Which could then give you the front of your necklace. Correct, absolutely. But you know, what I've done here Obviously, I'd only use three to go over that part there. Yes, yeah. And then I just keep using two, 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 until I get to this end. And then I would use three to turn the corner. And okay. I'd use only two again. Let so, me, can I let just me get a piece of black go paper? To this a bracelet here. Yeah. That I can perhaps, I'm trying to figure out your threes and your twos here. So you only use okay. three beads to turn the corner. Now then, if we can look here very closely and you can hopefully get the concept of what Kashna has been telling there you us. Go. Because if you look at the row of black, there you go, you've got three black, then two, three, then two, three, then two. And that is what you're saying. You pick up three on one row, two on the next no, no, row, no. and they sit inside each other. No, is that not it, what you no mean? it sounds really, it looks co more complicated than it is. Um, you pick up three beads to start the row. Right. In fact, do you know, I'm going to draw this. Let me do that, because I think, you know, people often think things are simpler um, than they are, and I, I think it takes a little bit of time. Hold on, let me grab this piece of paper and draw this. Okay. So let's get my little squeaky pen out. Um, 
Okay. Right. Yeah. So that's the four that you start with. Yeah. And then you will have only three in the next one. Mm -hmm. Two. And then you'll only have three in the next one. Aha, uh -huh. okay. I right. see. When I want to turn the corner, I will come through here, down here. Yeah. And I have to pick up three beads because I want to go like this. Mm hmm. And that's when it creates on a row three by two. When I, correct. When I want to turn the corner, yeah. I have to pick up three. But then for the next bit, I only pick up two because I've got this one is already here. Okay, now can I ask you, while yes. you've got this here on this level, where do you start your sewing then? If that's your first four, how do you come through and back on itself? Right. Show us by... Okay, so the, the thread, this is your little tail yeah. here. Yeah, through there. Okay. So you, you're establishing those together. Correct. Then you're coming down, around again, up again. Aha, uh -huh. okay. So you're creating a square, Correct. really, with your thread. Now which that's is much clearer called... for me, Kleshley, because it was hard to see no, what you were doing No, it is very here. hard, which yeah. is why I bought this paper with me, because I thought it might make things easier. Right, then I go th down here, and through across. here, up here, around here, through here. Yeah. Then I come out here. Yeah. Because I don't want to see this little area yeah, here. You don't want to I don't it. want to congest it. So then I put in only two beads. So I put one bead here. Yeah. Is my next one. And two bead here. Yeah. So I then go down here. Down here. Up here. Yeah. And so then I go through. down here. Yeah. And bring two more. And I go the opposite way around. So you, you're doubly sewing, really, to secure, you are aren't doubly, you? But, and you're building But you're building there. all the time as you go. Um, and you would carry on only doing, putting two beads so on each time. So this, where we're <coughs> looking here at your row of three and then your row of two, that's actually created by two lines next correct. to each other. Correct, yeah? correct, correct. So here, what I first thought was three black, then two black, three black, then two black, is not what you're picking up in one go, it's what you're going back. So sort of effectively, you can see the little squares now that Clash has drawn, and then you're bringing in the others at the side of it. So what you've done with this bracelet is done... I've done a uh, whole row. And then back, and then and change colour. Correct, back. absolutely. Yeah? Yeah, and back. absolutely. Can I borrow your drawing again, yes. just for one minute? Of course you may. The artistic drawing, but it Sorry, explains not, not it Sorry, not the most beautiful clearly. of drawings, but you've seen me actually, therefore, doing the thread path. Now, I actually do have, um, whenever we do any sort of um, right angle weave on a show. Fabulous. No, that's great though. I know it's a rough sketch, but that explains how Whenever it I works. do it on a show, I actually have an A, B and C on a pattern. And literally, uh, people sometimes say, oh, I haven't got the right colours. It's not to do with the patterns, the, re the colours. It's th the reason there are colours and A, B and C is to yeah. show where your thread path how is. How and why, okay, because, perfect. You know, one of the key things about beading and creating these wonderful sheets of colour is you need to know the right thread path. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, like, it's like a map. It's like driving your motor car. And just knowing which way you have to go to get it. And which way you turn. Now, there was another section, wasn't there, from this that you wanted to show. So do you want to explain the little cross and how you work through that? Yes, certainly will do. Now, I'm making here a, a little cross. Yes. Basically. Um, it's a little bit more advanced, um, a little bit more complicated. And I would strongly recommend that before you start creating shapes or anything else, you get the basics together because the basics are not the easiest. No. Uh, you know, they are easy, 
like anything in life, once you know how, mm -hmm. it's really easy. Like riding a bike. Correct. Although the so, next time I got on a bike, after many years, I fell off it. Oh, <laughs> no, you poor thing. I hope you didn't hurt yourself. Right, what I've done here is I have created a long row, a single row of right angle weave. I don't want my, my cross to be too long. Mm -hmm. And I thought it would be kind of quite nifty to um, put a little pattern in the middle of silver. Okay. So I've put four silver beads, but you'll see here if the camera goes in closely, or well, shall I pick this one up? Yes, I think that might be easier. I think. Right. On the third bead here, so the second bead that I picked up yes. was a silver bead here. Mm -hmm. So you have to think ahead of yourself, okay? Mm -hmm. So that was bead number one. The silver bead was bead number two. Yes. And the black bead was bead number three. In the next row, I used three silver beads. And then I went back into the black beads again. Now, the reason I've got more silver beads further down here is because I'm going to fold this over okay. to create um, a 3D object. Right. And that's the other amazing thing about right angle weave is you can create 3D objects okay. from it. Mm -hmm. So I know, for instance, that I want that part of my cross to loop, to loop like that. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I also have gone out and I have done um, right angle weave going out here. Now, one side of this I can either extend one side, or if you find it more difficult, um, then you can just quite simply. So I want this to turn and flip over. Okay. I personally find it easier to make the cross on both sides. So I'm just gonna finish off this. And the way of finishing this off is by just going back and rewinding your path. Now, if you're doing anything in 3D, it's a really cool and good idea to keep going back around your stitches. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop this bit off here. Let me just get, grab my, oh, they won't open with those on, that's for sure. I'll make my scissors. Let me get another piece of thread out from over here. Okay. Not too long. I'm just going to thread up and I'm going to join back up on the other side. Now, the, the other thing about doing right angle weave in a 3D uh, sort of more manipulated way mm -hmm. is that when you first um, move it over, which I will do in a minute. Now, if you're joining in a piece of thread, this is a very important lesson to learn. You know. As I said earlier, I don't like, you Long know, people threads. sometimes say, oh, I suggest that you have six yards full or six meters full. And I just think, oh, my God, because you're then going like this, mm -hmm. you know, Crazy. I don't have arms that long. No. So use something workable. The I guess they you... do that because they don't then want to have to join threads. But it, do you know, it's so simple. All I do is I go back by about three rows. I leave a little tail because I can get rid of that afterwards. And I quite simply don't just go around. So I'm literally. So again, you're sewing in a square effectively. I'm sewing in a square. You know, I'm sewing at right angles. I'm creating right angles. The whole thing is all about right angles. Uh, let me just take that knot out. Right, you can imagine, I got a wee knot just then. If you got six yards of the darn stuff, you know, you're really in, in um, yeah, you'd be going a long time. In so a hell of a, a, a state then, by then. And it's very exasperating when you get knots in your thread, I can tell you. Um, right, so I'm now working my way up towards the cross here. So now you're showing how to create the loop by I'm folding the No, I'm, I'm not even getting to the loop yet. I'm actually um, going up here so that I can show how you put the other side of the cross on. Okay. So I'm, again, sewing around one side, one way. 
we go. Let's get rid of that there. And then sewing around it in the other direction. Okay, so I've now got up to my silver part here. Let's flip that over. You know, don't be afraid to turn something over. You don't have to do it all in one direction. Right, I've got up to here. I want to make two little arms like I've done over there. So I'm going to come out this way again. Right. So I'm using three beads because I'm turning a corner, basically. In essence, I'm changing direction. So when you change direction, you use three beads. Okay. It's kind of like a simple rule of thumb. There we go. Uh -uh, and I'm now doing this again. And Dawn is now looking at some of these other things. No, these and thinking, aren't right angle weave, though, are no, they? No, well, some of them have got right angle weave in them. Right. Right angle weave is, is a sneaky little stitch, and it comes into things in all different guises. You know, if you once, you know, once people become an aficionado of, of right angle weave, they will find that um, it creeps its little way into other stitches. Because you um, sort of wrapped these around a stone, haven't I you? I have. That's sort of bezeling. But I have actually used um, kind of a bit of right angle weave in doing my bezeling. You know, you often do a square stitch when you're beading anything. So if you can get right angle weave underneath your belt, you will find that you can use it in so many different things. There, in, on the front there is a, a pearl pendant. And on the... Down here at the front. Uh, down here at the front, there's a, um, a little pearl pendant, which uh, was my sort of homage to Downton Abbey. And it's, it's got a, a, um, a crystal teardrop at the bottom of it. And if you look at the corners, I have made the PK, which sticks out on the corners of each well, of them. Well, having a look, that, I don't think that's quite the one you mean, is yes, it? Yes, it is. That Where one is. Is that the one you mean? OK. okay. Um, I've made the little points on the edges of it with right angle weave. That's beautiful, though. I mean, there's so many fabulous looks here. And again, hopefully we'll have many more shows that are focused on more jewellery techniques. But just to remind you, this is the right angled weave here for the bracelet that um, Kleshner has adorned me with. And you can see how gorgeous that is. So very much on trend, really beautiful. You can take it to a further level, of course, and go to even more layers. How beautiful is that? Now, that in essence is the right angle weave that Kleshner has been taking us through there. And this, of course, this is all part of our Craft Academy. <laughs>